On a late February morning in 2017, an Al-Qaeda deputy leader was traveling through a small village in Syria's Idlib province. Suddenly, his car was hit with a drone strike, but there was no explosion. Instead, the roof of the vehicle was caved in, with parts of it sheared like a razor blade went through it. The strike was a success, killing the deputy leader. No one knew it at the time, but this was a hallmark, a new weapon being used by the US, the AGM-114-R9X Hellfire missile. Since then, the R9X has been used multiple times throughout Syria and at least once in Libya and Afghanistan. It's also reportedly been used in other nations like Somalia and Yemen. It's a bold and bizarre new weapon in the US arsenal. Finding and analyzing images and video with our partners at Bellingcat shows us how the weapon has been used and how it could impact the future of America's drone warfare. The R9X is rarely used. Since 2017, there have only been 11 incidents where it is thought to have been utilized. Most of these strikes targeted leaders of Al-Qaeda or Al-Qaeda-affiliated groups. According to a 2019 report from the Wall Street Journal, both the CIA and Department of Defense use the R9X, and it has been used in countries where the U.S. has active counterterrorism operations in. While non-explosive or inert munitions aren't new, the R9X is. It uses six extending blades to increase the likelihood of killing its intended target. The fact that it's inert is meant to minimize civilian casualties. The U.S. drone program has a well-documented history of civilian casualties. Even the highest U.S. government estimates are significantly lower than death totals compiled by watchdog groups. One estimates a maximum of 801 civilian deaths. But while this idea of a non-explosive missile may seem good on its face, there's been a steady stream of criticism about the R9X. Human Rights Watch was quick to point out that the issue with many strikes is that they have the wrong targets. The R9X is only going to be as good as the intelligence used to guide it. Even if the U.S. determines it wants to kill a particular person, that doesn't mean that it can legally do so. Uh, under international law, you can't just go out and, and kill somebody because you think they might be a security threat. Though it's worth noting, of the incidents that we've identified, there's been relatively little collateral damage shown in pictures and video from the area. In the earliest strike identified, the one from February 2017, only the car and some bits of the roadway were damaged and the target was killed. Other strikes follow a similar pattern. Typically, a vehicle is photographed with its roof caved in, with distinctive cut marks in it. Sometimes there are one or two small craters in the road, showing where the missile or missiles impacted before the vehicle rolled to a stop or crashed. Large remnants from the missile are rare. In one case, after an incident outside the Syrian city of Idlib, a large remnant was salvaged and filmed. On it, you can see the label of the missile, AGM-114-R9X. The orange ball is another clue, something that the drive's war zone has identified as a pneumatic accumulator, or the part of the missile that controls the fins. It is featured in other Hellfire variants as well. No blade has been fully intact after the impact, but what is thought to be partial blades have been pictured among the remnants from other strikes, such as this one from December 3rd in 2019, outside of a small city in Syria's Idlib province. The R9X has yet to be used in 2021, at least from what visual media is available online. It may have something to do with President Joe Biden's administration's attempts to tamp down on forever wars, but drone strikes are still happening albeit more slowly than in previous years. As recently as July, the U.S. conducted a more conventional drone strike in Somalia against Al-Qaeda's affiliate there. The R9X could bring a new dimension to the debate over U.S. drone warfare and whether it can ever truly be free of collateral damage and human rights concerns. <laughs>